I talked about the root stocks, uh, and you can see inflation in here. So we got the Golden Delicious for $5,000. We had to pay $25,000 for what ultimately became the, uh, the, uh, um, the dwarfing rootstock. That's Walter Logan. He lives about 10 houses away from me in Louisiana at seven years old. He hates when I show this picture. So we talked about the advertising and the marketing and stuff like that. And, and so Stark Brothers started uh, 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 putting essentially billboards on rail cars. So across the U.S. as the rail industry increased, there's just these billboards rolling across town, north, south, east, west. And people started understanding what that brand was. And they started putting it on the sides of barns and stuff like that. So everywhere, Stark, Stark, Stark. And uh, International Fruit Show, this is an example. This is 1893. Uh, an example of, of, of w what it was like getting all these fruit, of people trying to find this fruit. And, uh, and Clarence, Clarence Stark was, was networking before there was Facebook. That's how he ran into Luther Burbank. They ran into one of these shows together. And there's a little bit of, of advertising. The 1904 World's Fair was in St. Louis, which is our backyard, and it was kind of more continued about getting fruit. And if you get to Louisiana, that's the, uh, that's the bear barn. That's a, uh, um, we're trying to get that to be a historical building. We just can't figure out the exact year that it was built. But that's that, that's that. Um, the interesting thing, we talk about our company embracing technology, and I, I kind of joke about the, the um, we used to, in, in the fields, all the work was done with mules. We had mules and horses pulling handheld tractors and plows and such through that. And in 1960, we traded uh, the, uh, the mule for a John Deere tractor. And that was embracing technology for that time frame in our career. So exactly, you know, how does a company talk about the next 200 years? How, how do we possibly do that when we're in an industry that's, that's just got this rapid consolidation, right? We're all facing who's buying whom uh, at any point in time that we're battling, much like any of you growers in the room. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to ship direct to consumer. Uh, we're not in Home Depot, we're not in Lowe's, and we're, we're, we're competing with that every day. You know, the problem is, you know, we're, we're trying to sell, you know, a great tree for $20, $30, and you can get, you know, a, a cheap tree that you won't be successful with, perhaps, at a Home Depot and Lowe's. In fact, I was um, talking with the president of Knockout Roses, and he said the worst thing that happened for his company uh, and the industry, these are his words, was selling knockout roses in Home Depot. Home Depot's not in the room, are they? Okay. Um, he said the worst thing that happened was selling to Home Depot because what happened was Home Depot says, we want cheap roses, right? We want to sell these for $6.99, $5.99. We want a cheap rose. And a cheap rose means I don't put as much fertilizer in it. I put it in a smaller pot than I should. Uh, I don't grow it as long. I, maybe I don't put as much water. And what happens is the customer takes the rose home, they plant it, and if they don't take care of it, it they fail, and then they say, I can't garden. I don't have a green thumb. I can't do this, right? And that's just not true, right? You need a good plant, and, uh, uh, and you, need to, you, need to, you need good direction as well. And like I said, you, if, if you talk to anyone on our phones or our website, you're going to get nothing but good information. Uh, and then, you know, at, at 200 years old, we're the ultimate legacy company, right? We've, we've just got decades of bad habits. How many times do we have to say, this is the way we've always done it, you know? And we have to change those things. I mean, everything is changing along those lines. So we did recognizing that we wanted a company for the next 200 years, that we wanted uh, our legacy to be the next generation for who we were. We kicked into a strategic planning mode and we got everyone together and we said, well, one of the first things we need to do is we need to build our mission and vision and value statement. And this was kind of a, a public announcement internally and externally. You can see this in our store. I think you can see it on our website. Uh, uh, as far as who we are, what we do, why we do it. If you want to work for Stark Brothers, you've got to believe in this. And so we had a, we had a, a task force to build this. And, uh, and Matt Bollinger, who's in this room, was heading up this task force, and he's responsible for doing the, the mission statement. And Matt Bollinger is an IT guy, right? So he doesn't wax poetic, but he's a smart guy. And so he goes through the archives, and he finds in 1916, when the company turned 100 years old, Edgar Stark said these words. 
So it has been that ever since 1816, the name of Stark Brothers has stood for all that grew best in nature, for the good of mankind. This is our heritage, our task, our duty, the preservation of our good reputation, the continuation of public faith, and the integrity of every promise, every claim, and every product that Stark Brothers offers. And Matt said, let's just use that. And then he pulled out his easy button. He said, that was easy. <laughs> you know, I'm in marketing. I usually don't take long to speak. <laughs> Our value statement, seven things that are really important to us. If you want to be successful with Stark Brothers, Stark Brothers today, you've got to believe in these things, right? And some of the people who worked with us for a number of years struggle with this. But this is really important, that the product quality and customer satisfaction matter above everything else. So funny story, when we're building this list, this was number four on the list. And one of the guys says, wait a minute, if it, if it matters above all, why isn't it first on the list? So that was easy too. Uh, and so uh, uh, we get stuff done, right? We don't talk about it, we get it done. Uh, we work efficiently, we embrace technology and automation and change. We have to do that. Change is, is rampant in, in our industry. We have to embrace those things. Uh, we've got to have a mutual respect for one another. We can't work in silos. The people who ship the packages have to work well and communicate with the people who grow the trees and the, who work with the people who sell the trees and all those things along the way. We've got to have a mutual respect for each other when we're doing that. Accountable for all good things and bad. If we make a mistake, say I made a mistake. We'll, fi we'll all figure it out together. Don't hide from it. Don't deny it. Let's figure it out. Let's do a better job with it. Um, communication and teamwork and think like an owner. Couple slides on our website. Again, I'm pretty proud of this here. And quite frankly, when I interviewed with the company, uh, which was on my first interview, was a phone and uh, phone interview, and they said, "So, have you looked at our website?" "Yeah, of course I have." "What do you think of it?" "That's a tough interview question, right?" <laughs> and I said, "Well." I'm not going to blow smoke up your butt. I'm going to be very honest with you because I had done consulting in the gardening industry for a number of years. I said, it's a world-class website. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Navigation is good. Upload speeds are good. Information content is good. All those, you're doing all the right things on it. And, and, and we do it. Again, we're very proud of it. Okay, so what's next, right? So if product matters and we've got our best practices, essentially, it's kind of interesting, our best practices is that our best products came from somebody else. So how do we network out there? How do we find other people who are passionate about what they do, who can find a product for us? And so this, in the past two years, we've introduced four Honeycrisp cross apples. Where there's a gentleman, a gentleman farmer, actually worked in IT for a number of years. He's retired. He's got 20 acres. And he's, he's crossing trees left and right for fun. And, and we met him through a farmer's market, and he said, you know, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting too old to grow the fruit, harvest the fruit, bring the fruit here, and sell the fruit. He said, but I've got some pretty neat trees over here that, that people just keep telling me how great this fruit is. So we have these Honeycrisp crosses and, and, and uh, Scarlet Crush, Ruby Darling, Red Romance, and, and Hearts Fancy, and they all have interesting characteristics. They're crosses with Pink Lady and Gala Apple, apples that you know, and, and, and they bring, one of them is, it's, it's got this cinnamon taste to it, so that's kind of good. It's a good eating apple, it's a good baking apple. The amazing thing is, um, three of the four apples, I'm not sure which one doesn't, they don't brown very quickly. So you got, we're doing our taste test, and we've got all these open apple things here. We're talking for 45 minutes, and there's three of these apples over here, they're not brown at all. And why is that important? Because obviously, one, it's, it's still a good eating apple. But today, there are, there are these, if you, anyone here, Arctic apples? Okay, well, so you will, because Arctic, this is, these are my opinions. Arctic apples are going are, are to be the root of all evil. Arctic apples are, are GMO enhanced apples that don't brown. But they're GMO that does it, right? It's not real. These are real apples. So the next 200 years, right? The, so how are we going to do this, right? We're going to align ourselves with smart people, whether it's the people who are bringing product to what we do, or it's the interns that bring through, or it's just continuing to embrace technology, or, or bringing in, 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 in growers that do special things for us as a company. We've got to recognize that product is king. We've developed and published, and we talk about our value statements, and, 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 and sometimes in arguments, you can say to people, hey, wait a minute, that's not thinking like an owner. You need to think like an owner on this here, because that's important. We need to be strategic, embrace technology and change, measure and manage everything that we do, challenge the status quo, and then to have some fun. All right, so who knows what happens if you go to a website and you hit an error page? Do you know what happens? 
get that 404 error message? Okay, so I joined the company on September 12th, 2012, and on April 1st, 2013, if you hit an error message on our, if you hit a 401, what does it matter? 401, 404 error, 404 error, you got this message. And suddenly you realize that the guys in IT were having some fun. And they were having lots of fun. <laughs> right, who talked about if Tony Stark was with me or, or, or right? Raiders of the Lost Stark. Starksky and Hutch. That one doesn't roll very well. Stark Wars. James, I am your brother. The man with the golden apple. That one actually looks pretty good, don't you think? That's, that's, that's like a legitimate one. It's a little fun. There we go with that. A little tribute to E.T. This one's kind of neat. Do you see Luther Burbank in there too? Right? This one's my favorite. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. And then when we think about the next 200 years, which is going to be 2216, we realize there'll be another Star Wars movie, that the hairstyle might still be around, and that in 2216, we'll celebrate our quadricentennial, and you'll remember James Hart Stark, his birthday is July 30th, but we, he will have restarted the space program and will be on Jupiter. <coughs> and that's what I have for you. Thank you so much.